Well, the keys to the game for Georgia is they've got to lock in. The word that we heard all week long was execution. They feel like they can get back to executing like Georgia does. They have a chance to win each and every football game. And for Kentucky, they've got to play special. And not just on special teams, they've got to raise their level on offense to match a level on defense that's been outstanding all year long. SEC football is presented in high definition where available by Raycom Sports. The Georgia Bulldogs, the Kentucky Wildcats. Two years ago, Georgia comes into Lexington and they were shocked by this Kentucky team. Last year, Kentucky played Georgia pretty close at a 10 to nothing lead in the first half before Georgia rallied for the win. Kentucky wins the toss, they defer, so Georgia will get the football first. Tim Maste will kick it off for the Wildcats. Richard Samuel, the talented true freshman back to return this kick, had a 60-yarder last week against the Gators. And has some running room here out over the 35 to the 36 yard line and that's where the dogs will start with their first possession. Well one of the tasks massive flaw on A.J. Green. Out of the eye formation first handoff goes to Marino. He's got plenty of room. He's to midfield and hit and dropped at the 44 by David Jones. A gain of 22 right out of the gate. Just heard Buzz talking about staying in your lanes. Be patient on the backside. Marino loves the cutback. Excellent job of seeing the crease to the backside, and all Georgia does is stay on their blocks and let Marino run to late daylight. He slides all the way to the backside off Clint Bowling's block. So a good start for the Dogs. Georgia will open with a four receiver set on this first down. Quick throw out to Massaqua. Muhammad down to the 35-yard line. Brought down by Stafford on a second down and one. That handoff will pick up the first down. Marino inside the 30-yard line down. Smith getting his first start at safety today. Stafford throws, looking to the end zone. Massaqua, touchdown, Georgia. That didn't take long. And Massaqua gets past Smith for the touchdown. They get a blown assignment on the outside. Obviously, you get a receiver that wide open, but the corner bluffs to the weak side, and really Matthew didn't see it. Matthew Stafford didn't see it initially, and then finds Massaqua for the touchdown over Smith. But Smith is the safety seam looking back saying, hey, what are we doing? They bluffed the corner blitz to that side. Blair Walsh with the point after. It's up and it's good. Well, that didn't take very long at all for Georgia to shake off the cobwebs from last week. Stafford with yet another touchdown pass. Back in a moment. On strike. How about that drive? Four plays, a resounding drive for the Dogs. Walsh will kick it off. That will go to Tony Dixon just outside of the five yard line. And Dixon will take it out over the 25 to the 27. And here, 7 of 13, had some rushing yards, had some receiving yards, and his first handoff goes to Alfonso Smith, and he will pick up eight, maybe seven on that play. Best of the season, another tough loss for this Wildcat offensive line. Here's a little option to the right side. It'll go to Alfonso Smith. He'll be close to the first down, which sits if the ball, knows the ball hits the 38, that should be good enough for the first down. They'll say it's just shy. Solid player at the safety spot. There is Willie Martinez, his fourth year as the Georgia defensive coordinator, eighth year on the Georgia staff. Cobb trying to shake free, can't do it. He's dropped back at the 30-yard line. On a third down and one, they lose six. Andrew Gulley, the walk-on senior, getting his first career start along with Akeem Dent with the sack. Well, you mentioned third and one here, David. They had just picked up nine yards of their running game, decided to throw it on third down and one with an athletic quarterback like Randall Cobb. They have had a tough time converting on third down, just 29% on the season. So here comes Maste. First in the SEC, fifth in the country in punting. And hits a rocket. That will back up Prince Miller all the way inside the 15. Prince dancing around to the 25. A 54-yard kick. Give him tit on the return.
Massaqua knocked away by David Jones. Plays on that drive, Georgia comes out executing on offense. The one play we missed was Sean Marino picking up a first down. Here is Marino. He's out over the 30, driving his way to the 33-yard line. After the next three quarters. Stafford has all day. Now he runs, fires. Marino caught, turns up field, midfield. Plenty of running room. Down to the 33-yard line of Kentucky. A gain of 34 yards. It looked like a sandlot play when it was all said and done. Boy, that's a great call, Dave, because you could see Matthew Stafford when he gets out of the pocket to his right. He's going to wave at Marino. Come back to me a little bit. He does. He presents his numbers to his quarterback. Good throw. And then Marino just does what he does. Gets out in the open field and gets as much out of the play as he can. But, well, that's a good call. It, it did look like you were in the backyard someplace on that one. Not necessarily my backyard, but somebody's backyard. Richard Samuel, the true freshman, with his first crack at it today. A little toss sweep to the right side. We'll get a couple. Samuel, according to the coaches, has been battling Caleb King this week for the number two spot behind Marino. He will stay in alongside Stafford. Quick throw, slant over the middle. It's caught by Massaqua inside the 15 down to the 10 yard line and that's where they will blow the whistle and it's another bulldog first down Ashton Cobb the first man on the spot field getting inside finding the windows the chains are on the ground so it is a first and goal situation for the dogs from the 10 out of the eye formation it'll go to the tailback Marino he scoots it down to about the six and a half with a touchdown pass early in that Florida game last week and then they had a field goal hit an upright Sutherland in motion the fullback. He'll hand it off to Marino inside the five. Driving touchdown, Georgia. Okay. Okay. Marino's 13th rushing touchdown, which leads the league. Sorry, Dave, when you you when you can run it right at him like that, you know, really no reason to have to execute out in the edge. This is the, the big fellows coming off the edge. Great job of pulling around the end. Cordy Glenn gets around, gets the block, and Marino follows him through the hole. Walsh's point after is up and good. Georgia has come out to play today. Two drives, two touchdowns. The Dogs lead it 14 to nothing. Six touches today for 77 yards already. And that kickoff will sail out of bounds. So good on their first couple of plays, then third and one went backwards and had to punt. Here's Cobb. He will hand it off to Monsell Allen. The bowling ball, 5'7", 225 pounds. Well, that, that uh, Coach Joker Phillips talked about with the two backs and Cobb in the back running the triple option stuff. The south ball looking to throw. Will loop it up, pass is caught into Georgia territory, and that'll be good enough for a first down. It's Kyrus Langster. Oops, see what he dials up here. Inside handoff goes to Tony Dixon. Looked like a hole there, but quickly that gap was closed. Rennie Curran among the dogs on hand for the stop. The football all the time. On second down and nine, here's the option near side. It goes to Smith. He'll be close to that first down marker, probably about a yard shy. Rennie Curran runs him out of bounds. They're probably going to try to hit it up in there. Timeout taken by Kentucky. Didn't like what they saw. And they want to make sure they keep the football. He went for over 200. Also, Michael Smith close to 200 against this Wildcat team. On third and short, they go to Smith. And I don't know if they got it. He leapt forward. And got in the middle of a bunch of white jerseys. Hard to see where the spot is. You get that snowball rolling downhill. It's tough to get it rolling the other way. And that's why with Kentucky coming up short, I think they're going to try to go for it here. They got the wind at their back and try to get some. That handoff 
goes up the middle to John Connor, the fullback, and he will have the first down and then some. The former walk on sideline, but this time they'll go ahead and call the play and they'll go back to Connor again. It's maybe a yard. Rennie Curran in on the tackle. That's part of his deal, Dave, as he gets lost back there and you can't get him blocked. He's extremely quick. Boy, Kentucky on the go. Pass is caught on the outside by Adeyemi, and he will be close to the 25 yard line. They'll act, actually mark it inside the 25. Prince Miller in on the tackle line for a play. Well, and it's like you're saying, Dave, they're not trying to speed the tempo of the game up. They're trying to lock you in defensively. As you see, they've come up just a hair short on the first down. 215 pounds. Out of the eye, the handoff will go inside to Connor, pounding his way for the first down to the Georgia 15 yard line. Powered by Honda Generators for the ultimate tailgating experience. And a quick throw and batted down. For the tight end, he was open for a touchdown. Here's a little option near side. Some room for Alfonso Smith inside the 10, down to the nine yard line, tripped to Georgia Tech. Dixon and Smith in alongside Kyle on a third down and three. They'll go inside, get it close to the five with Alfonso Smith, Reese Grinner, and John Connor. They will go to Connor. Connor's inside the five, first down. Wildcats have executed two fourth down conversions on this drive. They'll be in the eye. They'll go to Connor. Nothing happening there. Probably lost a half a yard. Corby Irvin slices in there to trip up Connor. The tailback and a four receiver set. It's Dixon. Touchdown, Kentucky from three yards out. His fifth rushing TD of the year. And boy, did Kentucky need that. David, I don't think you could say enough about Kentucky's front line. Excellent job up front. They get in behind Leninsky, gets a good block, gets up to the next level, gets a linebacker blocked as well, blocked two players on that play, and that was Jake Leninsky. Great job of getting the block. But the first one went through. Let's go back to this. He's hit it twice. How <laughs> so many times has he got to prove it? Here's the prove shot right here. And he does it again. So the Wildcats cut the dog's lead in half, 14 to 7. We will return to Lexington after a word from the SEC on the conversions with John Connor and then the touchdown. Excellent job up front. Last day's kick to the corner. Samuel will let it go out of bounds and that's two in a row. The dogs did it, Kentucky responds, so Georgia will get it at the 40. So Stafford will line up in the shotgun. Georgia's first two drives have resulted in touchdowns. Here's Marino. Stiff arming, a couple of blue jerseys and look at that, he turns you know, Rich Brooks said this this week. He says, no, Sean Marino has had some of the best three, four, and five-yard runs of anybody in the country. This year. Second down and five. Under 30 seconds to go in the opening quarter. Stafford running a little bit of an option. We'll get close to the first down at midfield. Micah Johnson able to bring him down. Stafford got some nice yardage for him. Well, that will do it as the clock ticks down to zeros in the opening quarter and a lot of offense between these two clubs. The Dogs at 7-2 and two come again. Kentucky at 6-3. and three. Georgia's first two drives resulted in touchdowns and Kentucky responded with one of their own. Second quarter football on the way from Lexington. It's our all tilt game of the week. We are back, and while we were away, a quick snap allowed Georgia to throw an incomplete pass. So now the dogs looking at a second down and 10. Kentucky showing pressure, man coverage on the outside with the two corners. Stafford will throw it again, looking to the outside. A.J. Green, David Jones on that cover. Four-man rush, Stafford lofts it up, going deep, looking for A.J. Bryant, incomplete. David Jones locked up with Bryant in the middle of the field. Pressure. Mims will punt it away. A wobbly kick. Fair catch called for at the 
15 yard line. That last drive, 12 rushes, just three passes. Here's Alfonso Smith making a man miss, and he will take it out over the 25. That should be good enough for a first down. Pounder out of Louisville, Kentucky, a senior. Cobb looking to throw now, will tuck it. Cobb spins out and loses the football. Who's got it? It'll be Georgia football. And the dogs who coughed it up in critical times a week ago get the first turnover today. The forced fumble came from Roderick Battle. Yeah, Battle comes in from the backside, rakes it out. So he was initially blocked, stayed in the play, did not give up on the play, came in for the backside and got the strip and Bird in for the recovery. Let's go down to Dave Baker. Dave happened right in front of us. Probably something Randall Cobb's done a thousand times in high school. He was spinning for that extra yardage, but at this level, you better know when you're spin, you might be hitting a brick wall, and he ran into a couple right there. Never saw the strip coming. Well, and that sets up Georgia with excellent field position just out there. Outside the Kentucky 35. Stafford will throw. Going for it all. Looking for Bryant. Just off his outstretched hands, and it'll be second down and 10. Trevard Lindley. Georgia trying to hit some home runs in the passing game today. They'll toss it to Marino, and he'll be bottled up for a gain of a couple. Micah Johnson. Third and eight. Play clock down to two. We get the snap off. It'll be Marino. Not going to happen. Inside the 35. But now you're kind of in that no man's land. Now Blair Wall certainly with plenty of leg. Stafford rolling right. Back across the middle incomplete. And the Wildcats hold again after the turnover. And that's a quality stand. A quick quick change situation and the cat stands off. Well you said it that's a great job by Steve Brown's defense to rise up and get a stop and really a good job defending this particular play. They tried to run a pick play. They were trying to pick off Robbie McAtee and get the ball to Durham in the flat. But he had he, they took that away so Stafford had to rotate back to the inside and get it to Green on an awkward cross the body throw and they couldn't get it done. Nice job by the defense of Kentucky. Randall Cobb back on the field, first and ten. He will keep it. A couple of good blocks allow him to get a few yards. Flag down. Handoff comes near side to Tony Dixon. He may have lost a yard or two on that. Asher Allen comes up to play the run. Illegal shift on the offense. Two players moving at once. Both did not reset for a full second. Penalties declined. Third down. Ugga. Did you know that? I didn't know that, no. <laughs> How about Randall Cobb? <laughs> Offense. Offensive set. A little triple option. This time they'll line up in a traditional formation for Kentucky. Single setback. Tony Dixon. The Cobb will throw. Boy, has all day. Lofts it up. Through the hands of his intended target. Another run pass option, and this time the option is to run it. And a good decision by Cobb. First down, Kentucky. Eight championships. He's a winner, a former 2A player of the year in the state of Tennessee. Think about him a year ago playing high school football. Tony Dixon, another Kentucky first down. Prince Miller trips him up. Higher timeout sending a strong message. Thanks, Buzz. Handoff gets maybe a yard on first down and 10 to Dixon, but the follow up, that's not blame that George is not here to play. I think Kentucky just raised their level a little bit today. Eighth play of the drive coming up as a completed pass to E.J. Adams. Pass complete. In the football, they're doing a nice job of mixing things up, creating problems for Georgia. Here goes Cobb to the 10, to the 5. Knocked down at the 3-yard line by 
C.J. Bird and Lamarcus Brown, a 16-yard pickup. John Connor back in at fullback. They'll give him the football, and he is stopped right at the line of scrimmage. Roderick Battle. The mention with Cobb in the backfield for him, and they've seen all year long. Dixon and Smith in it, running back alongside Cobb. He's in the shotgun. The inside handoff goes to Dixon. Stopped again at the line of scrimmage. Third and on third and goal. Here goes Cobb. Shakes and bakes for six. Kind of what we thought we were going to get, Dave. Joker Phillips decides to roll top to his right, a little run pass option, and he got a monster block from Tony Dixon on against the Keem Dent to get him to the edge. The touchdown is good. After the play, unsportsmanlike conduct. Celebration penalty number 18. The penalty will be enforced on the kickoff. I want you to watch for the block from Dixon right here. Here's Dixon right here. He's leading the play. Watch for the block. And that's against number 51, Akeem Dent. And boy, Cobb just steps right in behind it. That block actually got three white jerseys. He got that edge guy. That's who was trying to seal the edge was Akeem Dent. Just took that right leg right out from under, left leg out from underneath it. One after is up and good. I'll tell you what, this Kentucky team had a chance to fold the tents after getting Hammered for two touchdowns in the opening two Georgia drives, but Kentucky has responded to knot it up at 14. I think it's probably coming. <laughs> He's already returned a punt, although it was a fair catch today. I didn't think we'd see him on the punt return team, but the way he's going, why not? Well, after the unsportsmanlike penalty in the end zone, Matt Stay will kick it off, and it's a short kick that hits at the 38, but Samuel will gobble it up and take it into Kentucky territory as a flag comes in late. But a pretty good the block in the back. Return team to the 28. Two-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Will be first and 10. Out of 10 after the penalty, Georgia still with good field position. Marino to the line of scrimmage. Jeremy. Play fake to Marino. Stafford fires a bullet pass is caught by Michael Moore. Still on his feet. Moore to the 20. Knocked out of bounds at the 11-yard line by Braxton Kelly. But Stafford stepped up and threw a rope to Moore. Yeah, Moore's matched up against the nickel bat. Rob Robbie McAtee straight across the middle and a well-thrown ball by Matthew Stafford and then an excellent run after the catch by Moore. Lindley has to come over and save a touchdown. But an excellent accurate throw by Matthew Stafford. A gain of 46 yards puts Georgia just outside the 10 yard line. Marino a single setback. Marino dancing around. Just not a lot of room for no Shaw. Out of the eye, play fake Marino over the middle. Pass caught, touchdown Georgia. Sean Chappas, the fullback. That re re was reminiscent of the touchdown that Georgia beat Tennessee on a few years ago. Key 33, I think, was the play call. Veron Haynes was the fullback. This is a play fake. Chappis is going to release right up the middle. He's matched against Braxton Kelly. And you're right, Dave. Veron Hayes against Tennessee. Very reminiscent right there. And the throw from Stafford on the money. Point after is up and good. That was also the call, I believe, of the hobnail boot of the legendary Larry Munson. Yeah, legendary call there in Georgia history. John Chappis right through the middle. And he's an excellent pass catching tight uh, fullback. And it's something really Georgia has missed, that middle pass catcher. This is a team Georgia normally has a really good pass catching tight end. They've had to substitute a number of players because of injury, but they get that with the with the fullback down through the middle. Well, that was a quick drive 
11 yard touchdown reception, four plays, 57 yards. That's the second four play touchdown drive for the Dogs. Back that could not only block, but catch it, especially in red zone situations. Yeah, give some credit to Mike Bobo going back and finding a play that's been successful for him in the red zone. Winston Guy out of the end zone. Guy to the 30 yard line. Good return. For Georgia. That means just hang in there, keep fighting. it up out of the reach of C.J. Bird. Got in the end zone there to tie it at 14. Now Georgia up 21-14. On second down and 10, Tony Dixon. Well, he did a wonderful job of picking up a couple of yards when he could have lost four. Rashad and matching up man coverage on the outside. Well, I never thought I'd see that number as uh, different as it was. 131 yards for the Cats on the ground, but now they go through the air. And a flag comes in, a face mask on Daryl Gamble as Tony Dixon will have the first down with a gain of 19, and then you can add 15 more. If that was the face mask, or it could have been a horse collar, I couldn't really see, but it was a Personal 15. Personal foul, face mask on the defense, number 50. 15 oh. yards, and then the run, first and 10. You talk about execution, excellent execution on the screen pass. Langser, the wide receiver, comes in and gets a little chip block on Gamble, who's responsible for Dixon on the screen, and Dixon's out the gate. In the backfield with Cobb. Cobb should have snapped it and had a free play. Instead, Kentucky will take the five-yard gain from Alfonso Smith. Ball sits at the 28. Georgia showing four-man rush. Curran comes late, pass complete, out at the 25-yard line. It's down a distance marker. It's third and two. And on third and two, Daryl Gamble will take down Randall Cobb. They will lose five on the play. And now you're looking at a, at a bad situation, fourth down and long. Well, that's a situation here now where Willie Martinez, the defensive coordinator, turns Gamble loose. He says, okay, well, we're gonna gamble, no pun intended. Tidlachka, three out of six, his long is 51, but the Cats are gonna go for it on fourth and eight. They were looking at a third down and two just moments ago. They've converted two fourth downs already this afternoon. Three-man rush. Cobb drops the football, and he will turn it over to the Georgia Bulldogs. With 1.21 to go, it's to play before halftime. Here's Marino. He is tripped up at the 42-yard line. Shamari. Stafford being chased. He will. Get close to the first down. That'll be shy by a yard. He does get out of bounds, though, to stop the clock. Third down and one. Marino picks up the first down to midfield. Stafford today, seven out of 13. Going up top, looking for Massaqua. Incomplete. They will say it was uncatchable, so no flag, and a timeout for Georgia. Trying to set up a little screen, and it is read well by Ashton Cobb, who slipped through some blockers and made the tackle. Georgia will have to burn their last timeout. This is something deep in. I like it where I'm at. <laughs> Stafford throws on the run. Pass incomplete, looking for Chris Durham. That's Stafford's roommate trying to get his hands on it, just can't do it. Well, Kentucky went with their strength, and that's man coverage. Good job of Stafford extending the play. Durham lays out to try to make the catch, but it, it's a good job of Kentucky taking away initial throws and really flushing Stafford out. Boy, it's a 
good looking kick from Mims that Cobb will let hit and bounce into the end zone and that will do it for the first half. Matthew Stafford 8 out of 16 for 156 yards a couple of touchdowns. Randall Cobb 5 out of 8 45 yards but Cobb also on the ground 45 yards rushing Kentucky in a battle with Georgia. Let's check in with Dave Baker. Mark you wanted to get your team off to a fast start. I don't think those first couple of series could have been any better for you. No we started good and then we, we finished pretty good too. So we're in pretty good shape. It's the in between part that's got to give credit uh, to Kentucky for. They've given you some problems with that package with Cobb as he's gotten loose out there in the end. Well he's a, he's a great athlete and uh, it's hard to hem him up. He's uh, He's the extra runner with the extra blocker, and that, that, make, that causes problems for you. All right, thanks, Thank Mark. You. We appreciate it. That's Mark Rick. His Georgia Bulldogs go to the locker room as they lead the Wildcats of Kentucky 21 to 14. Back inside Commonwealth Stadium, where, as always, SEC football presented in high definition, where available by Raycom Sports. Dave Baker had a chance to catch up with Rich Books. Rich, rough start, but your guys got their feet underneath them, made a nice comeback in the first half. Well, I don't know who that was in the first quarter, uh, first half of the quarter anyway. We, that's not who we are, and uh, we finally started playing our kind of football a little bit. It's got the game back in perspective. Thanks, Rich. We Thank appreciate you. it. Best of luck, second half. That's Rich Brooks, Dave. Thank you, Buzz. And I think they really stumbled onto something here with this pony offense. It has caused Georgia some problems. It's uh, as Joker says it's basically you know they call it the pony with the uh, two tailbacks alongside Cobb but it's basically just a triple option. It really is and it, all it is is accentuating what Randall Cobb does mm -hmm. his ability to get out on the edge throw the football and then get him out there where he can run the ball. Kentucky's done a nice job of incorporating some things to get him on the move running and and throwing the ball. He's done an outstanding job in the first half. Well, Kentucky will get the football first. You look at the first half possessions under Joker Phillips' offense, and they had a punt, and they actually had a third down and one on their opening drive and lost some yards and had to punt it away. And a couple of touchdown drives in there. You know, Dave, while we have a moment here, I'd like to throw a big shout out to Chip Lindsey, the head football coach at Lassiter High School in Cobb County. You know, you and I love the high school football across the Southeast. Chip comes over from Hoover High School installs a new offense they go eight and two and make the playoffs big shout out to those guys in Cobb County great turnaround by Chip Lindsay at last night Cobb County of course in the great state of Georgia well fertile fertile recruiting ground both these teams spent a lot of time in Atlanta and the surrounding areas recruiting kids Kentucky's had great success down in LaGrange Georgia so Kentucky will get the football first taken by Tony Dixon Dixon out to the 30. Tony Dixon out to the 34 and a half yard line. Brought down by Daryl Gamble. A 20. The cop checks with his quarterback coach on the near sideline. Randy Sanders, the former Tennessee ball offensive coordinator. And they settle on a little sweep play that will pick up about seven yards. Tony Dixon on the carry quickly. Here's here in the first couple of plays of the second half. They will do a check with me. And that check went to the tailback Dixon and we'll get two would be about a yard shy of the first down. That'll bring up a third down and one. Well, a competitor. No question about it. You just don't want to call out your teammates, which got a little bit involved there, but he has mended the fences and uh, they certainly are on board with Mike Hartline if he's able to play. A power running game. Alfonso Smith will pick up the first down. Been since midway through the first quarter with this running game. Little option. Toss sweep goes to Alfonso Smith. Smith with excellent speed. A 4 2 140 type guy. South Carolina leading Arkansas as well. Quick throw and catch. E.J. Adams with the reception. That's good enough for the first down inside the dogs. 40. Asher Allen on the cover. 13 first downs for Kentucky. There's that look to the sideline, looking for a signal. Pass caught near side. Addie Yimmy, the freshman out of Miami, the true freshman. Prince Miller in on the tackle. And
Little option. Oh, good snap by Tony Dixon, and he's got some room. First down and then some. Boy, that could have been a big time misfire, but instead, Dixon shows some great hand eye coordination. He really did, David. First down and 10 at the 23 yard line. Eighth play of this drive coming up. There's the man you're talking about that had had some nice blocks. He gets the carry and will pick up six. The wide side of the field option. Here's Dixon. A flag comes in. And a hold against Kyrus Langster. And everybody in the building knew it. Holding on the offense, number 81. 10 yard drive from the start of the foul. Repeat second down. Now this young That'll back him up, second down and 11 now. A little reverse. Cobb comes back to lay a block. And Adeyemi run out of bounds, and Kentucky wants a late hit flag. Nothing happening there. One yard. Uh, Excuse me, a four-yard loss, third down and 15 now. Trying to set up a little screen, they hit Dixon. Georgia has some white jerseys around there, but Dixon able to get close to the original line of scrimmage. Rennie Curran in on the tackle, and this will be Chka and Sieber have combined to go just 9 of 19 in the field goal department this year. Mass day to hold. Field goal is on the way, and it is good. So that'll cut the Georgia lead to four after the 40-yard field goal. And Georgia stands tall after Kentucky started moving the ball pretty well on their opening drive of the second half. Back to Lexington after this. Got ourselves a four-point game on a cool, crisp afternoon at Commonwealth Stadium in Lexington. After the field goal, Tim Maste will kick it away for the Cats. Richard Samuel will take it at the five. Samuel out to the 25 to the 26 yard line. Guys in this ballpark today. It is a cold day with the wind blowing. Stafford to fire. Flag down. That's caught by Massaquaw. Prior to the snap, false start. Offense number 89. Five yard penalty. Uh, Georgia's done a nice job today. They are the most penalized team in the conference. But pretty quiet today in the penalty department. Let's go down to Dave Baker. Buzz. Yeah, Dave, keep an eye. Josh Anderson, who's their big right tackle, starting offensive tackle, 335, limped off at the end of the half, got a boot on his right foot. He's out for the game, so a young offensive line gets even younger. Here's Marino. Spins out to the 25. Give him a couple on the play. Second down and 13. Four man rush forces Stafford out of the pocket and a flag comes in. And that young offensive line. Little pressure. Georgia will try to set up a screen, and that was nearly intercepted by Jeremy Jarman. They went earlier this year against South Carolina. Could use one of those right here if you're a Dogs fan. Nine men on the front for Kentucky here. And here they come. And they get it! Danny Trevathan with the block, and Kentucky is set up first and goal. There was no question from the pre-snap look. Georgia actually had to walk in one of their gunners to the outside, and Danny Trevathan comes clean right through the middle along with Michael Swindell. Number 41, Swindell is the guy that ends up getting the block. So Kentucky looking at a first and goal, and Cobb 
Dancing to the outside, trying to sneak in. Touchdown, Kentucky. Talk from the top about what a dynamic athlete this kid is, and all it is a straight run for Cobb. It was a quarterback draw designed to go through the middle. He found a little day's daylight to the edge, and he just got snuck it in the end zone and left, left pylon. Fifth rushing touchdown for Randall Cobb, his second today. Receivers point after up and good, and just like that. Kentucky, which has had plenty of special teams problems this year, finally get one that results in a touchdown for the Cats. Down. Untouched up the middle. All right. Mass Day crushes this about six yards deep, and Samuel will have to take an ace. So that's touchback number 20 on the year. We'll see what Georgia can do with some momentum on the other side right now. Handoff. Marino gets a yard, maybe. Micah Johnson in on the tackle. Did him to virtually nothing since then. Stafford today, eight out of 17. He does have 156 yards, but the running game not there at this point. Corey Peters held three opponents to under 100 yards passing. Done a nice job against the run. This time, Stafford's pass to Massaqua is complete for the first down on a third and eight. A clutch throw and catch for the Dogs against Florida State last weekend. Stafford quick throw to the outside. Here's Massaqua. Oh, he needed a block. Michael Moore's receiver out in front. Probably got second down. We'll call it four. They'll work out of the shotgun again. Three-man rush. Pass is caught by Durham. Boy, he drove his man back and then had plenty of space to catch and turn. Beat the ball. Over the middle, looking for more. What a throw. Down to the 25-yard line. First down, Dogs, a gain of 22. And Stafford just threaded the needle. Michael Moore going down through the middle of the field, and Micah Johnson, the middle linebacker, is the guy responsible for that vertical, number four. He does not turn his head, and you teach a quarterback, if the defender's got his head to you, you can shoot it in there. He did a nice job of shooting it into Michael Moore. Right over the fingertips of Micah Johnson, the linebacker, and that sets Georgia up at the 25. Stafford up over 200 yards a game. Uh, again. Here's a toss sweep. Marino to the 20. Boy, big is an understatement. As the dogs approach their eighth play of this drive, they will hand it off to Marino. First down, breaking tackles to the five. Touchdown. What a run for no Sean Marino. And Georgia is back in front. Boy, he's so hard to get on the ground. No Sean Marino with his spin move. He lays two Kentucky Wildcats in his wake. Micah Johnson, number four, is going to be the first guy to miss the block. Actually, he steps right through that tackle of Ashton Cobb and then steps away from McAtee to get in the end zone. How about the stiff arm from Marino as the point after is up and good by Walsh. He just threw a couple of defenders to the ground. The dogs back out in front by four. We will return after a word from your local stations. Yards. Marino had 27 of those on the drive. Stafford, three out of three for 53 yards. Boy, when they're clicking like that, they are impressive. Kickoff taken by Winston Guy on the near side. Ran right into his own man and will get out of bounds at the 30. Of course, Tim Mastay of Kentucky also on that grady list. Here's Cobb, his pass batted down at the line of scrimmage. Corby Irvin, 6'4", 209. We'll see what Georgia's defense has in store for this Kentucky offense. They'll line up in a traditional eye. Little option near side, toss lead comes to Dixon, and he'll be 
hammered out of bounds by Roderick Battle. Boy, he, if he goes with more or less pressure now, Arch, then El Elber, Ellerby is coming at linebacker, and he'll rush off the edge, number 33. And here he comes. Kentucky picks it up. They'll go with a screen pass to Alfonso Smith. He'll take it out over the 35. Ghana over the summer painting some schools and wants to be in the Peace Corps. Spent some time in Africa after his Kentucky football career is over, and he just booms one. Off the fingertips of Prince Miller into the end zone. He'll try to run it out and gets it to the two. Well, that's a bad mistake by Prince Miller. He muffed the kick. He could have taken a knee in the end zone, and the ball would have come out to the 20, but he panics here, thinking, I got to get out of here because I've touched it. He could have taken a knee right there, and the ball would have come out to the 20, but he panics, and Kentucky does a great job. Here's Marino bouncing around to the five. We'll give him three on the carry. They've done a nice job taking him out of the mix. Here's Marino hit and dropped at the line of scrimmage. Careful about getting the ball out. Georgia three out of seven on third downs today. And they are looking at a third down and seven right now. And the play clock came to zero, but they got the snap off. Here's Marino dancing around, and he needed to get out close to the 13 and they will mark it at about the 11. And that'll be fourth down. Johnny Williams in on the tackle. That looks like a. Kentucky might have caught, caught a break here. They were trying to burn a timeout. Kentucky, first timeout this half. So they get the timeout, but they didn't get the timeout prior to the snap and they get the stop on third down. There were fourth down and two, the dogs will punt it. Kentucky got a block on the last one. And this is a wobbly kick that maybe somebody got a piece of that bounces back to the 30-yard line. Somebody may have gotten a piece of that punt. 30. Here goes Cobb. And that will do it for the third quarter. So we will flip-flop sides, and Georgia will have the wind at their back in the fourth. And the Cats will head into the fourth quarter, down by four. It's been a fun-filled afternoon here in Lexington. 15 more minutes to go. Yeah. 28-24, Georgia leading Kentucky as we begin the fourth quarter. The Wildcats in a great scoring opportunity right now after a 19-yard punt inside the 25-yard line. Randall Cobb has gone the distance at quarterback this afternoon. Here's Cobb on a little keeper. Cobb, first down to the 15-yard line. Cobb is the story and the fact they converted six out of 12 on third down at this point. Here goes Dixon, touchdown Kentucky, 15 yards. Well, the concern for Randall Cobb, watch the block now from Jeffries, pulling around number 76, gets Rennie Curran on the ground right there, and Dixon is the benefactor as he gets into the end zone, but excellent job of Jeffries pulling around and getting one of the really good linebackers in the SEC on the ground to clear the way. Not many guys in the league have had, have had an opportunity to do that to Rennie Curran this year. Seaver's point after is up and good. The Wildcats didn't have to go far. Just 29 yards in three plays. Tony Dixon with the 15-yard scamper. Fans. It is a three-point Kentucky lead. 14-26 to play. Remember this, as this game goes on, and it could come down to a field goal here or there. Georgia does have the wind at their back. Mass day will kick it off. This will sail out of bounds, and Georgia will get it at the 40-yard line. Looking at timeout right before the end of the third quarter to make Mims punt it into the wind. It's a little thing, but it ends up being a big thing to get a touchdown they did. Stafford to throw it up top. 
Looking for A.J. Green. It is caught inside the 20 down to the 18 yard line. I asked you where A.J. was. Now we know. Well, a good job up front to give Stafford enough time for this deep post route to go to work. A.J. Green working outside against David Jones. Really just an inside route. Now he runs by the safety. And an excellent job of going up and getting it. 6'4", 210 pound wide receiver goes up and takes it away from David Jones. Good protection up front though to let Stafford let that one wait and get it out of there. A 42 yard pickup. Out of the eye formation, here's Marino. To the 10, five, touchdown Georgia. Two plays, 60 yards, and Georgia is back out in front. Get the big pass play to A.J. Green, and now no Sean Marino gets in behind Cordy Glenn and Clint Bowling. Just a good job of blocking, good job by Glenn to clear the way, and Marino goes in untouched. Marino, three touchdowns this afternoon. The point after is up and good. He brings his total to 15 rushing touchdowns this season. That is tops in the Southeastern Conference. No Sean Marino, a playmaker that just made a play. Bryant, the last time they were able to go to three consecutive bowls, they have that opportunity here with six wins this season, although that doesn't guarantee you anything in life, but it certainly gives you that opportunity. But a seventh win would certainly lock up that opportunity for Kentucky. Now Walsh doesn't want to kick this out of bounds. He's had one go out of bounds. They don't want to give Kentucky the ball near midfield. This kick will sail a yard deep. Here's Winston Guy to the 20. Winston Guy on the run to midfield. Guy to the 30, to the 20, down to the five yard line. A 96 yard return sets up Kentucky first and goal. They might take that back. If you're a Georgia fan, maybe you do want to kick it out of bounds. Winston Guy takes this right a yard deep in the end zone. And how about this? He never breaks stride. Excellent job of blocking in the in the wedge to allow Guy to hit it at full stride. And here it's just a matter of you're going to get in or not. And George is able to get him on the ground. Excellent hustle by Andrew Williams. What a return. Kentucky down four. Here goes the handoff to Dixon. Back pedals. Drives his way down inside the five at about the four. Asher Allen. Cobb on a little keeper, dancing around. Cobb driving down to the wall. Did he get it? No. They'll say he's just short. Looked like to me, put the nose of the ball on the goal line. Well, we'll see if he gets it in right here. Cobb with a sneak. Touchdown. Didn't matter. And the Cats go back out in front. Three rushing touchdowns today for the true freshman out of Alcoa, Tennessee. And it's the way he's led his team, Dave. He's been outstanding in the leadership category. He's not put the ball to ground. He's not thrown the ball to the other team. He's done a nice job. He's done a great job of taking care of things. He did have the one fumble, I guess, earlier in the game, but he's done a nice job of directing this football team. Sieber on to attempt the point after to make it a three-point game. And he does so. Back and forth we go. Just another routine Saturday in the Southeastern Conference. Now watch what happens on the kickoff. You see it blowing it off the tee. It's caused a problem keeping it inbounds as well. Georgia has had three short fields, one because of a Kentucky celebration, two because Mastays kicked it out of bounds. Those two have resulted in touchdowns. And of course, the last time Kentucky with that big kickoff return, they took advantage of a short field as well. 
Well, that's a good kick into the wind by Maste. Samuel takes it at the goal line. Drop at the 22-yard line. Louisville's getting pounded by Pittsburgh. Here's a toss sweep, little reverse now. Here comes A.J. Green. He gets a block. Green to the 40. And run out of bounds near midfield. They'll spot it at the 49. Corey Peters finally chases down A.J. Green and a big play for the Dogs. Well, Dave, how about the block from Matthew Stafford? Number seven out in front. Going to get the block that springs A.J. Green down the sideline. An excellent block, really sprung the play. Sometimes you see that shoe duster from the quarterback, not there. Good job of getting <laughs> him on the ground. Duster. I like that shoe <laughs> duster. I had a few of those. Uh, a gain of 28. Ah, not you. Stafford to throw. It's Massaqua. Loses the football. Kentucky had it, but do they retain it? Yes, they will. Georgia coaches will want forward progress and the ball to be blown dead. Mark Richt is coming off the bench to talk to somebody about that. But I don't think it's going to matter. Well, Massaqua is going to catch this football. Good rush makes the ball get out late and high. Now Massaqua battling has the ball ripped out. Looked like Braxton Kelly came in and ripped the football out from his linebacker spot. Number 56 right there. Big hit. Ball on the ground. Well, that ball was somewhat uh, coming loose before Kelly was able to get over there and knock it free. And now the Cats are in business again as they lead by three. Dixon. Boy, he is surrounded by white jerseys. Nowhere to go when something goes wrong. Here's a chance to respond for Georgia. Well, Cobb did a nice job throwing it down at the feet of Tony Dicker in a four man look up front. They will bring three, and that's enough to flush Cobb, who is grabbed by the jersey from behind. The pass goes incomplete. Jarius Wynn. Averaging 57.5 yards per punt. This one into the wind will just die around the 20-yard line in a interfering with the opportunity to catch the football. And flags come out. Interference with the opportunity to catch a kick. It's a kicking team, number 19. 15-yard was by the foul. First and 10. Let's try to get Georgia the lead once again as the dogs are down three hand off to no Sean Marino Marino slips out of a tackle and gets it out over the 41 and exactly what Rich Brooks keeps saying as a late hit comes in but you got to wrap up no Sean Marino no Sean Marino with that carry will get close to 120 yards on the ground today after the play was over, personal foul on the offense from the 63. 15 yards and the run. Down counts. It's second down. Stafford going up top. Off the fingertips of A.J. Green and bottom of the screen. Massaqua, the senior out of Charlotte. Here's Stafford. Over the middle. There's Massaqua wide open. And that'll be a dog first down, and he coughed it up. It's loose. Kentucky has it at the 38-yard line. Are you kidding me? Robbie McAtee with the fumble recovery. Play. Inside handoff. Alfonso Smith will get eight. So they've had to rely on the combination of Dixon, Smith, Allen, and now Cobb, the man with the football here. Look at Cobb run into Georgia territory, excuse me, Kentucky territory at the 46-yard line. Rashad Jones. With a senior stepping up and showing that leadership. 
And the handoff goes to Alfonso Smith. It's come up with a stop. It's second down and six. Joker Phillips trying to guess where pressure's going to come from and try to get Cobb the best opportunity. There's Cobb running right into the heart of that Georgia defensive front and the defensive drum right now. Needs a big play here. Cobb to throw. Langster with the catch. First down, Kentucky, as he steps out of. Here goes Dixon, maybe a yard on the play, and the clock continues to move closer to six minutes. Cobb breaks the tackle of Daryl Gamble and gets a couple of yards on the play. Maybe I'll give him a yard, and that'll bring up. Just shake his head. He dialed up a good call, and Kentucky able to break the tackle. Loose football. And the Wildcats fall on top of it. The fullback, or excuse me, Tony Dixon. They'll take a delay of game. On the offense, number nine. Five yard penalty. Fourth down. Penalties declined. Georgia nearly got a piece of it, but a high kick. That Gray will field at the 15-yard line. So I think on both ends, well done. Gray steps. Four-man rush. Stafford over the middle. Massaqua with the catch. Breaks some tackles in a foot race. Massaqua cuts it back at the 30. Down to the 15, to the 10, and knocked out of bounds. Inside the 10 at the 7-yard line by... Robbie McAtee, and the Dogs are looking at a first and goal. And you can bet that Matthew Stafford, when he talked to the guys on the sideline, he told Massaqua, hey, get ready, I'm coming back to you. And Massaqua catches the football in the crossing route, and then it, it's just his athleticism that gets him down inside the Kentucky 10. Nice little redemption play for Mohamed Massaqua. 77 yards on the pickup. Matthew Stafford, by the way, with a career high 365 yards through the air. Out of the eye, Chappers the fullback, the toss sweep to Marino. No Sean cuts it back at the five and run out of bounds at about the four yard line. Flat. Chappers in motion. Play fake to Marino. It was dropped back at the 10-yard line. They were trying to hit Sutherland, but he was covered like a blanket. Stafford had nowhere to go. You're exactly right, Dave. 11. No Sean Marino right here. Samuel in a tailback. Marino now in motion. Stafford, pressure comes. Dodges. Pump fakes. Rolling, throwing. Touchdown, Georgia A.J. Matthew Stafford made it happen. Boy, he really did, Dave. He extends the play. You can't say enough about a quarterback that extends the play. And watch A.J. Green work the back line. He loses the little ground, gets in that back corner of the end zone, and 6'4 skies and makes the play. Looks a little bit like Montana to Dwight Clark right there. <laughs> and he made the catch in front of about three or four blue jerseys in the back corner of the end zone. Man, oh man, A.J. Green with an 11-yard touchdown reception. Stafford with his third touchdown of the day, 15th of the season, and he has 376 yards through the air. And this is a young man that threw three picks last week with no touchdowns, and he has answered the bell today. Well, it's been an unbelievable game. Well, I can't tell you how much that looks like a play that happened in Candlestick a long time ago. Four defenders around A.J. Green, but what A.J. Green does is he loses ground near the back corner of the end zone to get away from the defenders and then elevates and catches the football. I think Kentucky lost where A.J. Green was. They came up on Marino, who was at the goal line, and lost where A.J. Green was. A.J. stayed in that back corner, and 
Credit Stafford for elevating it up for the 6-4 kid to go up and get it. Okay, now here comes the question, is that Kentucky has had some success moving the football, but only in small amounts. They've eaten up a lot of clock. This doesn't look like a quick strike offense. Where do you go now? Well, I think you stay, you keep doing the same things you're doing. You've got two timeouts, just under two minutes at 154 left. Cobb becomes a major problem for Georgia at this point. When you spread it, his ability to run with the football. They got more than enough time to move it down. Of course, down four. The obvious here is Kentucky needs the touchdown. It's a pooch kick that will bounce at the 22. Taken by David Jones. Jones sneaks out. Needs a block. Jones stiff arms one Georgia tackler and gets it out close to the 40-yard line. Against the win. But Georgia with one timeout left, Kentucky with two timeouts. Cobb will throw it over the middle. Wide open is Grinter. Maurice Grinter down to the 34-yard line. Prince Miller brings him down. A gain of 29. Only eight receptions on the year for Grinter. He gets down through the middle. They completely lost him in coverage. Danell LRB, the guy trailing for the linebacker spot. First and 10, inside handoff goes to Tony Dixon. We'll get a couple. Clock goes to 127, and he's had the football for 10 more minutes than Georgia. And the Dogs lead by four. Pressure comes. Over the middle. Pass is caught. Asher Allen with a big hit. Langster holds on to it. Deal with Cobb running around with the ball. Lofts it up, looking for Grinner, nearly picked off. Rashad Jones made a play on the football. It goes incomplete. I think there'd be some design with him trying to run the football to pick up this first down. Here's your ball game. Cobb throws it, lofts it up. And it is incomplete, but it doesn't matter in Georgia. Although, a flag comes in late. There may be a face mask against Georgia. Goodness. Georgia showing pressure. Trying to set up the screen and it's picked off. Demarcus Dobbs saves the day for the Georgia Bulldogs. He elevated and snagged the football out of the air, and that is your ball game. Dave, it's just a situation where you got a young quarterback. The play is not there. Georgia's got it well defended. Throw the ball out of bounds, but he has not had enough reps at quarterback in the, in the SEC to realize let's just minimize this play. Great play by Dobbs to sniff out the... Georgia answered just about every one of Kentucky's salvos. They got back and were able to get the lead, but you can't say enough about both sides of the football playing as hard as they could play. A heartbreaking loss for Kentucky. You see Mark Rick and Rich Brooks just both kind of shake their heads. And Randall Cobb did a nice job today, but came up short in the end. Back in a moment. Full of Georgia Bulldogs as uh, Matthew Stafford throws for 376 yards, and the Dogs win it. Dave Baker caught up with Mark Rick. To fight your guts out this one. Yeah, it was a gut check. It was an unbelievable ball game. Uh, both teams did an unbelievably great job, and I'm just thankful. You've been around some great players that have made some great throws, but that last one by Matthew, that's that's one fans will remember a long time. Well, I was mad at him because I didn't want him to get sacked or fumble, and but he broke right and made it made a daggum play, and I'm just proud of him. Right. Congratulations, sir. Thanks. Great job. Also, Muhammad Massaqua, 191 yards on eight catches, but this was the play that sealed it for the Dogs as they win it. We'll have more in a moment. Stay with us. The Georgia Bulldogs will go to eight and two on the year, five and two in conference play. Kentucky drops to six and four, two and four. The Dogs win it. Demarcus Dobbs with a second interception this season seals the game for the Georgia Bulldogs today. Now, next week we could be either one of these three places. 
Georgia and Auburn, Florida at South Carolina, Mississippi State and Alabama at 12.30 Eastern time. Be sure to log on to Raycom Sports or secsports.com later tonight or tomorrow. Boy, it was a, a wild one, to say the least, in Lexington. It was a good game of SEC football. For my partners, Dave Archer and Dave Baker and the rest of our exceptional Raycom Sports crew, this is Dave Neal saying so long, everybody. You have been watching Raycom Sports exclusive coverage of Southeastern Conference football. The Georgia Bulldogs win it 42-38.